This morning we're going to be talking about the truth of hell. I, uh, I, I preached this, a series, I'm, this is the last one, in the series on heaven. And I have, you can go to our website at pureheartfellowship.org and uh, uh, click on the uh, sermons, uh, videos, or audio. You can download the audio and that kind of thing and uh, put it on your iPod or iPhone or your Samsung or your whatevers. And you can listen to it on the, work, on the way to work. Or you can go to Facebook, Pure Heart Fellowship, our uh, Facebook page, and uh, you can listen from there as well. So you can catch up on this, the Heavens on Sermon. Uh, heaven sermons right there, and there's four of those on there. Um, but I can't preach about heaven without preaching at least a sermon on hell. And uh, so I want to do that uh, today. And if this is your first time here, I don't preach about hell every time. So I just want you to know that. just want to say that. I don't preach about hell every time. But hell is something to preach about. Amen? Because we find it where? Where is it? It's in the Word of God. And if we're going to be true to the Word of God, we teach the whole Word of God. Not ashamed of that. Amen? Heaven is going to be an awesome place. We just That was a perfect song for what we've been uh, talking about. Heaven is going to be an amazing place for the redeemed of, of God. In other words, those who have by faith believed in Jesus Christ and made him Lord and Savior. Heaven is going to be an amazing place. Can I get an amen right there? But let me say this very clearly. Not everyone is going to heaven. Not everyone is going to be there. Some people won't make it. In fact, the Bible teaches us that many won't. Uh, the saved are going to heaven and those because of their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, they're going to be there for how long? Eternity. How long is eternity? Forever. That's forever and ever and ever. It's a long... Listen, in the context of our 80 to 100 years here, it is like a, we're only a dot on the idea of eternity. The continuum that never stops. It never stops. But the lost are going to a also in an infinity, a continuum that never stops. But the Bible teaches that the lost, those who do not trust Christ as their Savior, are going to where? Hell. Hell. Oh, okay. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? Who really does the wonders? Who really does the casting out? Who really is behind all of the works of Christ? The power of Christ is behind it. So false people can proclaim things that God goes ahead and does, and guess what? They're not anything to do with him. Okay, well, I've just said something you're going to have to chew on just a little bit. But anyway, and then we'll declare them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So it is to me, the truth is very clear. You will either spend eternity in heaven or you will spend eternity in in hell. I don't know how any clearer I can make it. And with the passage that I just said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, that should sh put a shudder down your spine to be able to say, am I truly a believer in Jesus Christ? You better be able to answer that with 100% confidence, I'm saved. If you can't, Let's get that nailed down because there's a problem. Amen. There is a problem. And the counter to heaven is not something you want to be a part of, and it's called hell. Amen. Now, there are, people believe a whole lot of weird stuff about hell. Let me just point out a few of those. One is they appeal to their own rationality and reasoning in, in this whole idea of saying that the truth of an eternal hell where sinners burn forever is just stupid, ludicrous, and demeaning. Hell doesn't exist. Do you know that there are a lot of people who believe that? Hell does not exist. Do you believe that? 
Okay, a few of you don't. That's good. We hope that before you leave today, all of you can say that. Listen, the second thing is they appeal to the very nature of God that wrote the word of God that gave us the truth. And they appeal to his one part of his nature. Not all of his nature, but one part of his nature. And in that appealing, they say something like this, that hell, the idea of punishment for eternity, flies in the very face of God because God is love. And for us to teach that he will send somebody to hell is heresy because God is love. Well, what about justice? What about truth? What about God can never break his word? If he says there's a hell, there has to be a hell. In other words, all of his nature is all true. And then there's still others that turn um, to religion and that whole idea that says that man is capable of redeeming himself. And therefore, every man is working out his own way to heaven and there will be no hell for anyone. Whew. And you'll hear that cast in this way. Do you believe that there's only one way to heaven through Christ? And people will say, oh, I think, oh, there's got to be other ways, you know, to heaven. Sure, there, there are probably other ways. What? No. What does this tell us? How many ways does this say there's to heaven? How many? Everybody raise your hand and put one finger up. One way. What is that way? Through Jesus Christ. He says, I am the way. Is that as clear as I can say it? I am the way. That debunks that whole idea. And then also the idea, there's an idea out there that cultists want, I want to say, um, without exception, every cult, I think, they have this concocted plan that somehow their followers um, can escape eternal damnation. In other words, if they just follow this cult kind of way, there's not going to be any eternal damnation for you. And uh, you can live in a joyful, better world with 20 hundred vi uh, virgins for you and all that stuff. Now, I'm not trying to slam any particular religion. I'm just saying this is, this is not based on the Word of God, but it does sound good to people. You've got to understand something. All of this sounds good to people because what it says, if man can work it out, then man can do whatever they want to do, and they'll find their path, and they'll eventually end up in heaven. It makes it so much different than believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and do the works of him that has saved you and be a part of his kingdom uh, this way. He says, he says, we want to be that. That's how you get to heaven is by his grace being saved through the blood of the Lamb. And if that's so, you are going to produce the works of God. They'll come, they'll come along and you'll be able to see and know that I, am, I belong to Christ. But I'm here to tell you this morning, I'm really not concerned about what you believe about hell. I don't care. I mean, I do care, but in, in this context that I want to straighten it out. But I'm not asking you what you believe about hell this morning. I'm not concerned with what the world believes about hell, although I wanted to show you several ways that it comes forward. And you know what? I'm not even concerned about what I believe about hell. Okay? In other words, n how we feel about hell in this room is not the issue. You with me? Our focus today is what does God say about, come on, hell? What does God say about it? And that's the only thing that matters. When you get down to it, what does God say about it is all that matters because in the end, it's not going to matter about what any of us think about hell. The scriptures will be proven correct. Amen. Can you agree with that? God's word is going to be proven correct no matter what. Every philosophy and every opinion of man is going to perish in those days. And hell is absolute eternal separation from the presence of God. 
and will be in the outer darkness. Now look at this verse. Those who do not know God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, these shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Right from the word of God, 2 Thessalonians. Now, there may be no other teaching that has received more doubt and more denial than the truth about hell. In fact, in the churches today, it is avoided. The surveyors will tell you people don't want to hear about hell. They don't want to have a sermon preached about hell because it doesn't make them feel good. And if I preach on hell, which I am today, there will be some that will call me old-fashioned, hellfire and brimstone. <laughs> They'll call me out of touch. You need to just keep everybody on the positive. They'll say I'm out of touch with reality and foolish and ignorant. As a pastor, you must want to run people off. <laughs> No, I don't. I want to save people from this place called hell. Amen? That's what I want. I want you to know that you are solidified in the kingdom of heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I never, when I'm in heaven, I want to see your face. If I don't see your face, it means you're in hell. There's only two places we're talking about for eternity. It's either heaven or it's hell. Is that clear? Now, I don't want to stand before God and say, why didn't you tell him about hell? Why didn't you say it plainly? Why didn't you say it clearly? Why didn't you preach it with a passion? Why didn't you hammer this point home? There are people under, sitting in your uh, congregation that went to hell because you didn't pr do your job right. Can, could I stand that kind of criticism? No. I couldn't. And I shall not. Amen? All right, there's a text that I'm going to use. It's a little bit lengthy, and, uh, but I want, I want to use this text related to the topic of hell. There was a certain uh, uh, rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and, and uh, fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. This is a pretty horrendous uh, picture here. So it was that the beggar died, and he was carried by an angel to Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now, in italicized here, here's from the King James Version. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And when he cried, he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Now this was the rich man, and he could see across this chasm. And he sent Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in, in this flame. But Abraham so said, Son, Remember that you were, in your lifetime, you received your good things, and likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all of this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And then he said, I beg you, therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear from them. And he said, No, Father, Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to them, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, near, neither will they be persuaded. The one rises from the dead. Amen. The Word of God. 
I'm going to use that text along with a few other scriptures as we move forward in this. I just want to say very clearly, hell is not a figment of an imagination. It's not something that is just ca uh, 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 cast out there as some subjective idea or some thought process. Hell is a real place. The Bible says, lest they also come to this place of torment. That means hell is a very real place. And um, it treats hell just like any other geographical location in the Bible, the way it's worded, the way it's structured, that the sentences are structured. It's talking about a specific location. And since Jesus is speaking here, we know that Jesus believed in hell. And uh, he's not only in our text saying that, but he warns about going there. If your hand causes you to sin... Now listen to this very carefully. Now Christ is teaching here um, to the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the world, and he's saying, or at that time, and he's saying, if your hand causes you sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into, uh, li into life maimed rather than having two hands to go to hell into the fire that shall never be quenched. Whatever is causing you to not receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's better to cut it off than it is to continue with it and go to hell. Paraphrasing. Hell is a very real place, and Christ is saying it in a couple of these passages. It's a very, very real place that we're talking about. Now, hell's going to be filled with real people. And I want to say clearly that hell wasn't originally made for man because I found this scripture, Matthew 25, 41, that says it so clearly. And he will also say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Amen. Come on now. Man was not originally in, in design or in any way created for hell. Man set himself up for hell. How did he do that? Sin entered into the world. I rejected God. I said no to God. I, and when I say I, I say that because if you were Adam or you were Eve, you would have done the same thing because every one of us has sinned. So every time we sin, we just agree with what Adam and Eve did. And then, therefore, there is what is right and just for those who sin is an eternal punishment just like what is right for Satan and his angels. It's the same type of punishment and justice. In other words, hell was made for those who reject Jesus Christ as their Savior. But hell will simply be filled with people that say no to God. That's what it boils down to. It's, a, it's real simple. Hell will be filled with people that say no to God. Now, get this. Hell contains real punishment. I know that people don't want to think and dwell on this. The language used, it couldn't be any more plain that hell is a place of pain and torment. That's what's used in the passage. It's very, very... Listen, we'll be wide awake. I'm not we. Excuse me. Let me whoop, scratch that. Let me back up. Those that are in hell will be wide awake. Those in hell will be conscious. Those in hell will be wishing they could die. They wish they could sleep. They wish they could rest. But there is no rest. There is no relief. There, there is suffering upon suffering and anguish upon anguish and a weeping and a gnashing of teeth and the flames are hot and there's a burning that's going on with an unquenchable fire. No mercy, no grace, no forgiveness, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Listen. Thanks be to God that he continues to sit on a mercy seat today. Amen. Amen. And thanks be to God for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers our sin. Amen. And that we have been 
He has revealed himself to us. We have responded to him and we now have that covering. Praise be to God. And the Bible says that is our salvation. Amen. Here's some of, according to the scripture, the types of punishment that will happen. I don't want to dwell on them forever, but I want you to clearly know some of how the Bible speaks of these things because it's really, really... I, Listen, I believe with all my heart the church today, 2014, has taken the edge out of Christianity to a very severe point. I remember there was a time in my life that I was struggling with a direction that I was in with a church. And they wanted to change whole, a, a complete direction and go a different way. And they had a title for it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but they had a title for it. And here's what they wanted us to do. They wanted each and every person to write down their testimony completely, write it down, how they were saved, then go back in and take out words like the blood and take out were any offensive word that might be in there in a place that was something kinder and gentler and something that wouldn't be offensive to someone. That's the kind of taking the idea of the Word of God and taking the edge off to where there's not even any urgency anymore uh, as we preach from the, from the pulpit. My friend, there is no guarantee of tomorrow. Can anybody say amen to that? You can walk out of here today and I'm telling you, your eternity can show up on your doorstep. And whether you are saved or not will determine whether you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. That's the urgency that's among us. We need to know. We need to know that our families are saved. We need to know that the people we care about know about Christ. We can't take the edge off. We've got to constantly keep pushing the envelope. Amen. Because salvation is so important. I'm not saying take a baseball bat out and beat them over the head with it. Unless that's the only time you're going to see them, you know, then, then it makes sense, you know. Go ahead. If you're only going to see somebody one time, give them all you got. And shoot every barrel you got at them. It's the only time you're going to see them. But if you have somebody you're going to see over and over again, if God willing, you know, fire a shot at them. Then reload. Next time, fire another one. And reload. <laughs> And perhaps one of those blasts God will use to turn their hearts toward him. Amen? Amen? The Bible says there's an unquenchable fire. And people say, oh, there won't be any flames in hell. Well, okay. What does that say? This is found in Mark 43 and Luke 16, 24. Our passage shows that there's memory and there's remorse, but no forgiveness. You can't say it enough. It's constantly there. How horrible would it be for me to remember how evil I was and then be so remorseful and there's never any forgiveness at all there? That would be agony on agony because the rich man remembered that he had five sons. <laughs> You see that? There is an intense, unsatisfied thirst. How many, has, how many in here have ran the bridge over here on um, 66? Have you ran the bridge? Have you ever got to the other side and didn't have a water bottle with you? Well, that's what I did just Saturday. I ran the bridge that morning early with Brother Greg, and it put him out of church. He's not even able to be. No, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. He's got some issues. But, but anyway, we ran, the, we ran the bridge, and I didn't have a water bottle with me. Man, I was on the other side just going, Lord, how stupid can I be not to have a water bottle? Lord, put one right there. But he didn't. He let me learn from my mistake on that one. I need to take one with me because I was so thirsty. Do you realize that there is no... Yeah, that is not even in any way comparable. Perhaps some of you have come to heat exhaustion in the 100 degree heat around here. I have, and I know Brother Eddie has. Many of you have, where you're, all of a sudden you stop sweating, your head starts pounding like crazy, and you're like, 
Holy moly, I got to do something. What's your body telling you? I'm fixing to shut down because I need water. Now, what if you were in that heat exhaustion mode forever? Forever. And ever. And ever. Not one drop of water. There's misery. And there's pain. There's frustration and there's anger. There's eternal separation from what? Eternal separation from God. Listen, that means that everything that is lovely, everything that is pure, everything that is good, everything, listen, everything that you and I will experience in heaven, they will not be able to experience at all in hell. And the Bible teaches us that there's an undiluted wrath. Now, Jesus Christ took the wrath of God for sin upon himself on the, on the cross. The Father literally turned his back on Christ. There was that sin put on the weight of Jesus. Every sin you've ever committed and every sin you ever will commit and every sin that you've committed up to this moment was placed on him. And he went through an anguish that he cries out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because God the Father cannot look upon sin, can't be a part of that. It was part of the process. Listen, in hell... The just punishment, the fury of God, the anger of God will be poured out on sin. No one wants to hear that. No one wants to say, oh yeah, that's, that's our religion. This is the word of God. That's, that's not a religion. That's truth. Are you with me? This is truth. This is what it tells me is there. And it also tells me this. Hell is permanent. And besides all this, between you, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that no one who wants to pass from here to you can't. They cannot. Nor can those from there pass to us. This is something that is fixed by God. Do you, can you remember another place God fixed something? How about, well, yes, absolutely. Not, not what I was thinking about, but yes. How about, anybody remember Noah? Yeah. Anybody remember an ark? Anybody remember Noah and his family going in the ark? Does anybody remember that God shut the door? And when God shut the door, no matter how bad Noah wanted to open it, when all those people were beating on it, screaming, hollering that we're going to perish, we're going to perish... There's no way to open it. Same idea. See, what God fixes, no man can cross. No man can get, go over that barrier. It's what he determines is the line. He determined it in the ark, and he's going to determine it in hell and heaven. The rich man is told right here that he had to stay there. <laughs> and I just want to remind you of something. The rich man is still there. You with me? That's been way over 2,000 years. Listen, he's still there this morning. If you die without Jesus Christ, you are most certainly going to go to hell. And if you go to hell, you will be there forever. Now, let me just say this. Hell is not an annihilation. You will continue to live. Hell is not a temporary place of purging. Over time, you're, you know, a, a thousand years, your, your, your sins are going to be purged out of you and everything bad is taken care of and then you'll be able to move, be promoted to he, uh, heaven. Nope, not going to happen. Hell is not the grave and hell is not a parable. Hell is a real place. It's a place of punishment and it lasts forever and ever and ever. 
the good news is this. Come on. I can avoid hell. It's high knee it. <laughs> I can do them higher than that. I'm just saying. Here's the response that was made to the man. They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear from them. <laughs> what does that tell us? It tells us that the answer for us is found in the word of the living God. Whew. Glory. We can find that answer. We can know that answer. I can avoid hell. Even though I'm guilty and ought to go to hell, there's an answer. I can avoid hell. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It holds the answer and still does. Listen to this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whoo! That's an answer. That's an answer. Praise be to God. It tells us of God's love for sinners like you and me that we can be saved in spite of our sin. Somebody say, praise be to God. Secondly, here we see this, for he made him who knew no sin, Christ, to be sin for us, oh my gosh, that we might become the righteousness of God and righteousness means without sin. We become the righteousness of God. Amen. The Bible has an answer. Christ's death came and went and it provided salvation for us according to the scripture. And then we hear in John eleven twenty five, 25, I, Jesus is speaking, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Amen. Whoo, glory. If I don't pump your blood, man, you are dead. See, this tells me it is God who will save all who will come to him by his grace because of the sacrifice of Christ. If nothing else, this ought to make every person in this room want to be saved. Amen? Amen. Every person in this room should want to be saved because who would want to go to hell? Who would want a just punishment forever and ever and ever. But here's the sad fact. People you know and people I know will populate hell. In fact, it may be those in your own household that die and go straight to hell. Or, Well, I'm not going to split that here. Here's the question. Where do you want to spend eternity, my friend? Where do you want to exist forever and ever and ever? Why would anybody want to say no to Christ? Why would anyone want to reject God knowing that hell is an eternal punishment? Will you be among those who reject Christ and be found in hell? See, Satan is really subtle with some of this stuff. You know, we, you know, if we're a smorgasbord Christian, look out. May not be a Christian at all. Smorgasbord doesn't believe the truth. It believes what they want to believe. Therefore, it's a man-decided doctrine based on what they want to piece together. My friend, if you don't believe this Bible, if you don't believe God's Word from cover to cover, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Or do you know that uh, that will be? Listen. Or do you know? Uh, who do you know that will be? I Listen, you might know somebody that's not found their way to Jesus Christ yet. You may know someone 
But if they died today, they'd be going to hell. <laughs> you know, how, how does the Bible instruct us to react to that? Here's what it says. Share the truth in love. That's what it says. What are we waiting on? We ought to call them today. We ought to go see them today. We ought to jump on with both feet and say, listen, I don't know for sure. I can't judge you. All I'm saying is that pastor preached a sermon on hell today, and I'm going to tell you right now, you need to go over to that side and listen to it. And listen, I don't even know if you're a Christian or not. Listen, I can't tell by the way you're living your life. Do you know Christ is the blood of the Lamb shedding abroad in your life? Is, is it real to you? Listen, I don't want you to go to hell. I love you and care about you so much. They may reject you, but they're not rejecting you. Who are they rejecting? They're rejecting the message of Christ. They're rejecting Christ himself. Listen to me. This is important. It's the most important thing in our lives. we got to get it right. And there's an old song. An old song, a hymn. None of you old enough to know it probably, except me. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. That's the simple answer to a very complex question. And there's an old song. And here it is. It's, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Sinking all the way to hell. Sinking all the way to hell. I want you to leave that up right there, Drew. And I want us to bow our heads in prayer for a minute. Just a minute. With a message like this, I know it's been challenging to sit and listen. But perhaps God is speaking to you right now, right now. And you realize you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You, you've avoided him. You've rejected him. But today you realize you need to because you do not want to go and live in hell. And so by faith, you can place your trust in Jesus and be saved and go live in heaven. You may be sitting out there and you realize I'm a smorgasbord Christian and that means I'm probably not a Christian at all. And in that context, you go, Lord, I want to nail that down today. I want to get it right today. I don't want to be a smorgasbord person that claims to be a Christian because you say, not everyone who says, Lord to Lord to me shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I want to nail this down. I want to get it right. I want to know that I'm saved. Save my soul. This morning, whatever condition you're in, if you can't answer the question, I am definitely going to heaven. If you can't say that that way, I just want you to lift your hand this morning. Everybody's head bowed. I see that hand. Hallelujah. Every eye closed. And I just want you to lift that hand up and say, Pastor, pray that I'll be saved. Is there someone else? I see that hand back there. Praise be to God. I see that hand. Hallelujah. I don't want to go live in hell. I want to go live in heaven. And I, I want to make sure of that. Today's the day. I want to make sure I see that hand back there. Praise God. Is there someone else? Is there someone else that wants to nail that down? I want to be in heaven, not hell. Eternal punishment forever. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? I see that hand. Praise be to God. May God give you strength. Is there someone else? Listen, we're here for you right this minute, right this second. We're here for you.
This whole service has been set up so that you would know the truth. Is there anyone else before I pray? Anyone else? The Holy Spirit is speaking in your heart. You know, you know right now whether you're saved or not. There's no question because the Holy Spirit is with us. Where two or more are gathered in His name, I am there. Christ is here. The Spirit of God is here. He's shedding abroad in your heart now. He's saying, lift that hand. Say, I want to be saved. Is there anyone else that needs and wants to be saved? Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Right now we're going to pray. And if you have your hand up, I want you to pray this prayer with me. We're going to seal the deal. We're going to nail it. We're going to slam this thing down. We're going to say, I am saved at the end of this. You pray this prayer with me. I'm going to say a sentence, and you just say it to yourself right, right there. You can speak it out loud or uh, just what, however you want to do it. But let's get this nailed down right now. Dear Jesus, today, I realize that I am not where I need to be in terms of salvation. I've heard messages before. I've been in context of church before. But Lord, I can't answer that question that I'm saved for sure. So today, based on the truth of the Word of God, based on what Christ has done for me, paid for my sin through His sacrifice, I today accept him as my Lord and Savior. Save me today. I invite you into my life. Help me know you more. Now I turn my face toward heaven and say, Thank you for saving me from hell. Thank you for taking me to heaven. And I rejoice in my new salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all the saints in this room, including those who just prayed, I want you to declare, I am saved. Say it out. I am saved. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you